Hello friends, my name is Nick and this week's plant of the week is Begonia erythrophylla, commonly referred to as the beefsteak begonia. This is a rhizomatous type of begonia and this is one of the oldest hybrids of begonia that is still currently on the market. So it's as if it's a relic houseplant and kind of gives you more of a reason to want to grow it in your home. This is one of the easier begonias that I've grown. I have tried out so many begonias over the last couple of years and I'd say uh, less than half of it have made it through my care. So this is absolutely one that can handle a little bit more neglect compared to some of the other begonias, specifically the rhizomatous begonias. So if you've been struggling with those in the past, this might be one to try out. It's got these beautiful green leaves on the top, kind of like a very dark olivey green. And on the back side, it has this lovely crimson red color. I believe that's where the name erythrophila comes into play. I believe that means something about red on the back sides of the leaves in Latin. Think the Syngonium erythrophyllum as another example. But this is just such a fun begonia. It's not going to give you the most uh, stellar foliage in terms of some of those other just like insane foliage patterns that you're going to see on some begonias, but it still just holds up and it's really held up through time as it, like I said, being one of the older varieties of begonias out there. So this doesn't require too much bright light. I'm growing this one underneath one of my grow lights in my home. I think an east facing window would be fine, a north facing window would be fine. I would probably steer clear of a west or south facing window just because they might kind of bleach out the foliage. Begonias don't love bright light. I used to grow a lot of my begonias outside in my courtyard in my old apartment because it was completely shaded by a tree in the summertime and the begonias loved it. This is one that I've always grown inside though and it's done totally fine underneath the grow light. You can see some of the leaves have gotten a little tired over time just from the way this plant has grown. It's always got a nice set of leaves on it but it always just seems to have one or two leaves getting tired over time. It just seems to be like the natural way that this house plant is growing. It's also creeping a lot as you can see. <laughs> I got this as a really small plant a couple years ago from the potted elephant and uh, it's really creeping all over the sides of the pot. You can see down here, there's this like long vine of leaves here, kind of from the way it grows. I'd say if I had to relate it to any more popular plant out there in the manner that it grows, I would say it grows very similar to like a philodendron gloriosum, but the watering for this has probably been part of the reason why I think this is such an easy house plant to grow. It's a very drought tolerant begonia. In fact, I believe this begonia prefers to be on the drier side. I let the soil dry out like 50 to 75% of the way before I go ahead and give this a drink. If I go a little too long, it might get a little wilty, but it always perks back up, which is something I've not had always happen <laughs> with my begonia. So just a begonia that's proven to be tough as nails to me. The soil itself is a standard soil mixture. I don't think I really did more than add a couple spoonfuls of perlite from just a standard bag of soil and planted up in this terracotta planter here. If you were working with a ceramic planter, as I mentioned, this is a plant that doesn't like to sit in wet soil. So maybe add a little bit more perlite and drainage to the soil just to keep your house plant growing as happy as can be. But inside this terracotta here, some plain soil seems to do the trick perfectly fine. For temperature, this can handle a wide range of temperature. I think from like 50 to like near 100 degrees would be totally fine for this begonia. So one that would also be perfect to put outside if that's how you want to grow this house plant and it can probably stay out there for longer and come out before some other house plants. But like I said, this is one that I have had no issue growing inside. Unlike some of those other begonias that seem like during the summertime they require that like outside humidity, this one, doesn't require that. This one's fine in standard household humidity. Roughly like 50, 40% humidity is going to be totally fine. Unfortunately, begonias are toxic to pets, so not a great one to keep around if you have nippy animals. Not the most enticing plant to chew on either, but still gotta caution you there if you do have nippy animals. Propagating these, uh, also very easy. You could propagate the stem just like you would propagate a philodendron gloriosum, very similar in that way. You would just take a piece of the stem, submerge it in water, soil, what have it. Probably would want to subject it to higher humidity uh, conditions while you're propagating the plant. Or you could even do just a single leaf. I believe you can do it from the petiole or there's even a way to like dissect the leaves and cut them up and put them in soil inside humid conditions and they will grow plants. I've never experimented with just growing these from less than one leaf, but just one leaf is all you need. But apparently one leaf can really go a long way. You just might have to do a little bit of research on that. Fertilizing these, you can just fertilize them once or twice a month with standard 
houseplant fertilizer during the growing season. You're probably gonna to wanna to fertilize your plants after you've had them in the same pot for a full year is after that, that's when the nutrients are going to start to pleat and you might start to notice that some of the leaves aren't coming in as big and beautiful as they were before. But such an excellent begonia. If you've struggled with begonias in the past, this is one to try out specifically if you've struggled with rhizomatous begonias because some of those can be very difficult like the Rex begonias. Haven't always had good luck with them, but this begonia right here has really, like I said, proven to be tough as nails. So highly recommend this begonia. Definitely going to be a more inexpensive begonia. Is it going to satisfy your sweet tooth for some really insane, crazy foliage? Not necessarily, but if you're like me and you appreciate the more plain plants and even more so appreciate plants that have different colors on the back sides of the leaves, this one just might fit you like a glove. So thank you so much for joining me today. How to care for begonia erythrophila, erythrophila, the beefsteak begonia. If you don't already, you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Philly Foliage. Subscribe to my Patreon for even more houseplant content. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. What are you waiting for? And I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great day.